Hey YouTube, Mike the Renai guy here. How are we all doing today? Hope we all had a safe and productive week and we're all being safe out there. Okay, today's video, I think it's part six if memory serves me and at my age, you know, memory goes, is going to be the venting of the RUR Sensei unit. Okay, what we have here is once you have all the piping, gas, electric plugged in, water pipes, condensate drain line, relief line, okay, we got the venting. What we have here is the concentric venting. Um, that would be the one pipe to go through the sheetrock and through the outside of the house. Now, you're gonna have this fitting is going to be included on top of the unit and on this side, which is the fresh air, you have a cap. Now, this piece, this adapter, is going to go from the concentric and it closes off the air intake and it just lets the gas out. And this is the piece that you could use the two inch Schedule 40 PVC. And that's what these two holes up here are for, for the next uh, type of venting. So let's make believe those holes aren't there and we're going to go over this um, U-Bank vented. All right, what's going through here is the 11.5. Then they make an 8-inch. Okay, so basically it's the concentric with the plastic inside. Remember, condensing needs the plastic. The box will say for condensing models only. So it has the dark gray plastic inside and the light outside. We're not going to confuse the issue, so I don't have the other one, but that will be on another video. All right, there is a mark on the vent that says top, so when it gets pushed through the wall, you know what's the top because that's the way it has to face. Then you get an elbow, then you get a white escutcheon, and when my cameraman, who now I have my son, Michael, as the cameraman today, when he comes around, you're going to see this side, which has the black a scutcheon. So basically what we do is we always mount, uh, and we always use the 11.5. We mount our all our tanklesses on 2x4s to bring it off the wall so we can get this escutcheon on. Elbow and then the 11.5 through the the wall. Okay, Michael come around this side <clears throat> so we can show outside. So this now would be outside the house. Now there's a problem here. The problem is, is this white. None of this white is supposed to be showing. When I take this apart, I'm gonna push this in, I'm gonna show you what it's supposed to look like. But the reason that I'm showing this is because you need to cut this vent. Now, I have a separate video on how to cut Renai Eubank venting. But to figure out how you wanna cut it is you assemble this piece so that that this pipe, this elbow, and this pipe engages with each other, and then you just measure from the escutcheon to this black part. The reason that you don't want this is this white part is not UV protected. The black parts are. They will not discolor, and they will not rot through. The sun will cause this to become extremely brittle and break. So, once you have it in, just measure from the escutcheon to the black seam here. We have two inches. And then when you remove this, so let's say we remove that, you just measure two inches back and mark your pipe and cut it. And when you push it back in, you'll have no white. This part will now mate up against this. If this pushes it a little bit, you're fine. But that's, you don't want any of this white showing. So you cut your two inches off, you push this in. All right, I got, we're gonna take this apart. Let's move all this over. We're gonna take this apart and I'm gonna show you what I gotta, um, well, let's actually just take this off first. And it is gonna be a little bit of a Dickens because the plastic is tough. Here, Michael, pop around this side. After you're done, you want to put the screw into here, which holds this down, and then you want to put screws here and here, which is supplied in all of the U-Bank venting. 
there's two little three screws actually inside of a plastic band all right so let me pull this out and take this apart now it is going to be a little bit of a dickens because the plastic really likes to hold in there So now, Michael, come back around here. So that's the way you want the outside to look. Just like that. No white sticking out, just like that. And then the escutcheon on both sides. All right, let me, let's remove this. And I'm gonna show you. All right, Michael, let's go back over to here. They make a five by three. So you see the difference in the pipe size? And it's eight inches long. So it's the same, it's the same as this one, which is eight. And it comes with two smaller escutcheons right here. Which and we cut a five and a quarter inch hole. It's just that this hole is a little bit too high because of the bigger pipe and this here will fit right oh like like with the other the other vent you put a screw right in there and then this will then go through and made up to this it's a smaller vent it's for when you're not going to mount it on two by four it goes right up against the wall and you can have a smaller vent go through you see how the end is smaller escutcheon smaller pipe is smaller and if you notice you see how the inside black is a half inch longer than the white because that's when you cut this you just don't measure your two inches and cut it you need to cut this white part first then measure and this part has to be a half inch but go, go look at my video how to cut Renai Eubank venting and I do a full cut with the beveling cleaning blowing out everything all right now say you want to use the two inch vent so that's when you're going to need this piece has got to stay on and that goes right there so now only the exhaust is going to go up and out you need to remove there's a plastic like almost like a plastic screw in here and you're going to remove this vent this is the air intake this is the exhaust this is the air intake so I already have the pipes cut for the um, air intake so here's we're going to start with the air intake that in there that will be like that and then we're going to take this bag, just back up a second. We're going to take this bag that comes with the RUR units. And inside of this bag, there's two screens and two stainless steel screws. Now, inside of the instruction manual is two more screws. And that's going to be for here. And here to hold the PVC in so you actually get four of these screws this screen is for the outside and we're gonna go with that in a minute it fits right into a two inch fitting and then you want to take your screws out Take your drill and just drill one screw through the PVC and through the vent. You see? 
Now that holds the vent in from popping out, but it, it's also will be able to, for you to remove it. And you're going to do one on the air intake and one on the exhaust. You want to have to, and it could be glued in. Trust me, I did it. But it can't be removed if you need to clean this out. If you get bugs or something in there, you won't be able to clean it out. You have to cut and do everything over again. So, the, um, let me, oh, let me show you the escutcheons. What we do is we use these two inch PVC escutcheons. Now, I'm gonna only have the one on the outside, but we put one on the inside to cover that hole. But since, and it's usually a two man job, but we, it's only one man right now and a cameraman. So, we put this through. Okay. Now, of course, once you glue everything in and get that screw in there, it'll be nice and straight. So there's your air intake. Now, I'll show you another trick in a minute. Then you want to take another 45, another, another um, screen, and you could do this when it's outside. Get your screw in there. Okay, now we're going to take a measurement for the exhaust. Here it is. Alrighty. And you can throw this away if you want to. We use this the, a PVC cutter. Cuts it perfectly, nice and square. All right. Get your escutcheon on. Again, like I said, this would be a two-man job, and we won't have the luxury of being able to go around the wall. But here at the studio, we have that luxury. Then I'm just gonna cut this out here. And then put cameraman there's your vent they got to be 12 inches apart now if you want to you could come out next to it and then come over this way 12 inches and have the 45 face that way but that's the way it would look air intake exhaust out and of course this big asshole wouldn't be here okay he's gonna move around so he can see it there we go. So that's the way it would look. Escutcheons right up against whatever you have. Hardy board, stucco, siding, brick, block. We fill it with, uh, we fill it with uh, uh, silicone. And then, of course, like I said, it's a two-man job and we don't have the luxury to grab it. He, my son's inside or I, he's outside, I'm inside. We push it together, then we cut them, and then glue it all on, and then the, the customer can paint it. Now. I'm going to show you one more option with this. All right, Michael, if you go around the front. Say you have a big garage, a big two-car garage or a big three-car garage. You could use, let's get this apart here. Let's make believe we didn't cut that hole. You could use garage air. So you could do that, put a screw, put 
Don't put the screen in the 45. Put the screen right here. And now you could use garage hair to make the air intake. So like we have a large garage, even a big two car, nine, 10 foot ceiling, or a big three car, you could use that space. I wouldn't recommend using air in a basement. I wouldn't recommend, recommend using air from the house. But a big garage, you can definitely do it. So that's another option right here. Now, say you wanna go through the roof. You could run 65 feet of this exhaust. Every elbow, you have to minus six feet. Every 45, you minus three feet. So you have 65 feet of total run, and then every elbow you minus six, every 45 you minus three, and that's how much pipe you run. And again, I cannot stress, it is schedule 40 pressure PVC. So it's red letter, and it's the same stuff they use for water main, not the black letter, which is called foam core. Now, say, you're going to go th through the existing hole in the roof. You take the old B vent down. You have a big garage, you're gonna use garage air. But you take, you pull the B vent down. Don't sleeve this through the B vent. Pull the B vent down and get a new shanty to bring this through. Now, what you wanna do is up at the roof, you do not wanna use a 45. So when you go through the roof, this is going through the roof, you don't want this rain is going to get in it. You don't want this, an elbow. I don't have enough hands here. So you don't want this with the screen. You want to use a return bend. You can make it out of an elbow or a street L, or you can buy a 180 degree return bend. That's what you want coming up out of the roof, two feet, and put your screen right in that. And that would be your roof end. And now, of course, if you if it happens to be a commercial application where you're not going to use room air and you're going to go through the roof with the two exhaust and fresh air, then you're going to, I would always face them opposite, at least two feet apart, and face them opposite. And you'll never have a problem with it. Okay? And, of course, you don't need to, you just glue it. You don't have to go crazy with it, but just and glue it. You don't have to prime it, it's not drainage, but just glue it. Hold it in, make sure it sets, and then you'll be good to go. And you always put your, your screw in here. Well, in here, you're gonna have the plastic screw. Put your screw in here, and your screw in here for you know your pipe for your garage air. Get it nice and straight, and put your screw in there, and it'll stay. And that those screws come in the instruction manual. All right, YouTube? Okay, I hope um, this series was enjoyable. I hope you got out of it, a lot out of it. Um, I greatly appreciate all the calls and all of the comments that you guys have been putting. And I hope for all the phone calls that everyone has given, has sent to me and emails, I would have been very helpful. All right, again, in the uh, comments below will be my um, uh, email. And if you want, to know about the venting, just give me an email and I'll shoot you back um, the model number and what I think you should need. If not, I'll send you my phone number. You call me. The best time to always call me is between five and six o'clock Eastern time, cause I'm in Florida, uh, when I get home and then I can spend time on the phone with you. All right, YouTube, you all enjoy that endless hot water and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye now.